thank you for having me here tonight, guys. Thank you. Uh, so yeah, thank you very much for, for giving me the opportunity to come here and talk to you tonight. Um, uh, you know, what I'm going to talk about, uh, you know, it's probably something that, that will affect, if it hasn't already, will affect every person who's going to get in the water. Uh, it's also something that a lot of times we as, as anglers just really don't want to pay attention to because it's, uh, you, know, you know, fishing is fun. This is something we love. You know, being outside is, is going out there is, is something we just, we love and we, we do it to, to take away stress out of our lives. Um, but uh, personal safety is often something, you know, that we neglect. Uh, so I'm going to talk about just some just some different things that can happen when you're getting out on the water uh, and you're and you're spending some time outdoors and, and, and kind of ways to mitigate that. Uh, obviously, there's no way to, to mitigate against you know, every kind of situation, everything that can go wrong on the water. But um, there are some things that you can do to prepare and just some ways to kind of get yourself in the right mindset for if something does go wrong. You know, you're going to be able to then, you know, uh, adjust to it or at least react in a way that will will, will take something that, that could have been really, really bad and maybe will only just be a little bit bad. As, uh, as Brian mentioned, I'm the, I'm the owner, uh, the operator, and the head guide at Madison River. Um, something that, that maybe you don't know about me, I'm also a firefighter and an EMT at Mount Warren. Um, I do that part time. Uh, so uh, weekends, nights, you know, just whenever there's a good fire, I'll go up there. Um, so yeah, so outdoor activities, they present inherent risk. I mean, that's obvious, right? We're going to be outside. Uh, we're in moving water. We're on slippery rocks. Uh, we're out in inclement weather and all sorts of temperatures. Um, you know, you're going to Stone Mountain tomorrow. You could be looking at some thunder lightning. Getting outside, it definitely, it presents some just inherent risk. Anything we do presents inherent risk, right? Um, you know, getting, getting your car coming here, today had some risk involved. Uh, that is by no means a reason that you should not be doing these things and you should not be getting outside and fishing, but you just have to accept that everything that you're going to do comes with some risk. And yeah, that risk gets a little elevated when you're kind of out away from, uh, you know, uh, response and out of cell phone service and you're kind of out in the world. Um, I would bet that just about everyone in this room has a story of something that, that happened to them or almost happened to them. Um, I'll lead off with one of my own, uh, and I've still got a pretty pretty solid scar to prove it. Uh, I was living in Colorado, you know, several years ago, and the nice thing about Colorado is it stays, you know, bright. You know, in the summertime, it stays bright. You know, ten ten thirty at night. Uh, so I would get off work, and I would just bust ass right up to the river. I shouldn't say that in church. Um, I'll just, I, you know, I I tear up to, uh, you know, the the most local stream I could find and, and fish for a few hours after work, um, and. Uh, you know, one night I was out there and I was just, I was, I was hurrying because I got, I'd stayed at work a little late and I was kind of half trotting through the woods. I wasn't quite watching my step, took a root, fell down, put a nice hole in my, you know, brand new pair of waders, corresponding hole right there in my leg. And wasn't a fun experience. Uh, didn't have a first aid kit with me. I was about a mile from my truck at the time. Um, was bleeding pretty good. It was one of those things that you kind of looked at and you're like, yep, that's bad. Um, <laughs> So, uh, you know, that was a situation that, that was, that was bad. I had to get a bunch of stitches. I've still got a, you know, a little scar from it, but I didn't have a broken leg. I wasn't caught out there as the sun was going down, but landed a little bit harder, uh, landed on a slightly different kind of surface, you know, twisted something. It wouldn't have taken a whole lot for me to be out there by myself. And it was already dusk and I was a mile from my truck. You know, I was able to get myself back there, was able to kind of get myself patched up, but that for me is a close call. Um, it wouldn't take a whole lot for that to have been something a little more serious. Um, you know, that, that's something that I learned from that. From there, I started saying, hey, I need to carry at least a basic first aid kit with me on all these, you know, any place that I'm gonna be. Um, so that's something I've done since then. But at the end of the day, at some point, if you spend some time out in the wilderness, you're gonna encounter a situation, whether or not it's you, whether or not it's someone else, uh, you know, that you run into, um, you know, in, it's going to happen. If you've been in the water, it's probably happened once you already. It'll probably happen again, no matter how, you know, you're going to run into a situation like that. In that situation, take the steps necessary to become an asset rather than a spectator or even a liability. Uh, preparation and understanding how to respond in a situation uh, is not only your respons responsibility for your own safety, but uh, in a situation when you get out there, you aren't necessarily going to have qualified medical attention like you would, like if something happened right here. Um, and you, if you can be an asset in someone else's emergency. So common fishing injuries, what are the things that, that you know, obviously we deal with? Falls, absolutely the first one, especially in fly fishing. Um, slippery rocks, moving water. Uh, most of the time falls aren't that big a deal, but it happens, right? I mean, it's, it doesn't take that many falls to realize 
that you really can get hurt doing it. Um, you know, twisted, you know, twisted ankles, broken bones, strains, uh, got a broken fly rod. That's just awful. If anyone's like me, if anyone's like me, they feel themselves going down and it's find a soft spot for the fly rod, <laughs> you know. Those things actually have warranties, so if you do fall on it and smash your fly rod up, that will get replaced. I don't know what the warranty situation is on your bones. Uh, soft tissue wounds, so hooks. Who's ever put a hook in their finger? I'm sure it's happened, right? Yeah, ever make you think about going barbless, right? <laughs> um, you know, with the flies, if you're fishing small flies, you know, you can get those out with just a little bit of, you know, grit. <laughs> But, um, you know, if they really get in there, and especially if you're fishing something a little bit bigger, you know, you may actually need to seek medical attention for that too. Uh, the tools we use, so, um, you know, knives and pliers and all the, all the kind of hard stuff that can affect us. Uh, and then something that, that happens that I know I've, I've torn a pair of waders on this is barbed wire. You know, you get out there in some old farm country and you're just walking through the woods and you don't see it, but there's all this old barbed wire that's out there near where we fish. Helton's a great place to do that. Animals, snakes, insects, probably the biggest threat. Um, snakes, most of the snakes we deal with are, are the banded water snake, which are not poisonous, not fun. Like I don't love them. Wouldn't want them, you know, dropping out of a tree and getting them waders, but you know, they're not really going to hurt you, but, um, you know, there are, there are copperheads, there are some timber rattlers out there. You now for me, uh, insects are probably my, going to be my biggest concern. So getting into a hornet's nest or walking into a bee's nest, I walked right into a, a bee's nest. And the first time, the first sting I got was like, that's weird. I wasn't expecting that. And the second one was like, oh, it's bees. Yeah, yeah, that's bees. Um, fortunately, it was bees. It wasn't hornets because once I, you know, scuttled away, they got off me. Dogs, you know, this is a terrible thing, but some of this kind of rural redneck places we fish, people just leave their dogs out. Um, I've been chased by dogs before. It's, you know, sometimes they're friendly. A lot of times they're not. Just something to think about. Uh, and then certainly the elements, right? So, you know, you're in water and you're out in, in temperatures that are either hot, cold, um, you know, you've got water levels that might be coming up. So that's something that can happen is, is, is dealing with water and, and elements. Um, dehydration is something that we also don't focus on nearly enough. Uh, you know, the first thing I do on a guided trip is I'll chug two bottles of water and, and uh, just because I, I probably won't during the day, it'll be lunchtime before I start thinking about drinking water again. I know a lot of folks that don't even carry a water bottle with them and that's something that can really affect you pretty quickly. And then non-emergency injuries, right? Um, car trouble. So that's probably one of the most common ones that you would run into, uh, especially if you're kind of out there on, on, you know, dirt roads, vehicle accidents. You know, if you're ever up, especially in some of these little single lane dirt roads, you ever see someone driving a little too fast coming around those things. It's not going to be your fault necessarily, but it can certainly happen. Uh, criminal threat, um, not really a huge, huge problem, but when it happens, it can certainly, you know, affect you. Um, normally people aren't going to mess with your person, but your vehicle. So you're going to run into someone who's, who's just looking to, you know, either break into your, break into your car and see what you got and, you know, when you're out there. Uh, and then getting lost. If you're a blue liner, if you really just love getting out there and, and finding someplace new and getting into some water that you haven't seen before, you know, you can actually get out and get lost in some of these places. If you get turned around, if you start following little creeks and tributaries, it's, it's something that can happen. Effective preparation, that includes having the right tools, the right training, and the right outlook. So... Preparation for an emergency, you don't train for like one really bad thing to happen. You train yourself how to react to when something bad happens, how do I think in that situation? That's how people get hurt and it's how people, you know, make something, make a, a situation that could be a little bit bad, a lot bad, is they don't have the right thought process. They panic, they, they get tunnel vision, they focus on one thing. Uh, when if you can train yourself and, and think about something bad before it happens and think about how you might react if something happens and then train yourself to, to know the process in an emergency, you're going to be much better equipped to react in a way that will have an effective and positive outcome. Uh, certainly the right tools. So, uh, you know, uh, uh, the right waiting equipment, and I'll, I'll kind of talk a little bit about that too, but uh, for... Uh, for a medical emergency, having having access to a first aid kit that can that can, uh, you know, st do very very minor effective things that you can do with very limited training, but that can potentially save someone's you know life or limb or, or yourselves. Um, you know, catastrophic bleeding, being able to stop stop bleeding and manage bleeding, uh, to potentially splint a, a broken bone. Um, you know, airway if you can if you can help keep someone breathing or or get them started breathing again, you can potentially save a life, you know, doing that. And it doesn't take a lot of equipment, but you gotta have some very basic tools with you to, to do that. And then outlook, uh, not panicking. 
if you're there and you're breathing, you're able to, to affect a situation in a positive way. So situational awareness. Um, this is, <laughs> I'm sure that's Photoshop, but I love to imagine it's real. You know, we go to fish and we go out in the, in the, in the wilderness to, to kind of get away from all the things that are pressing in on us. One thing that I love about fishing and it just has always drawn me is you're so focused on this minute task, right? At the same time, you do need to be able to make a conscious decision to step back every now and then and just focus on, okay, well, what's going on? And what I mean with that is weather, right? If we're in the mountains, that weather can change really quick. You really can't trust a forecast either. Time of day, if you're like me, you really like to, to, to fish and, and really work a piece of, you know, especially if you're, you're wild, wild trout fishing, you got to know uh, you know, what you can effectively do to, to get yourself back before it starts to get dark. Who else is nearby you? So are you fishing in, you know, are you at Mitchell River and, you know, you've got a car, you know, just about every other spot and you know there's, there's fly fishermen all over the place or are you, you know, you someplace where there really is nobody? Gear. So weather appropriate clothing, definitely the first thing you want to talk about, the things that can affect us. Obviously cold weather, right? If it's super cold, you've got to have some really good cold gear. Uh, but even sun protection is very important. Good rain gear, good, good cold gear, good wind gear. Always plan for like the worst weather that you could possibly be facing. Uh, wading boots. So there's always a, a good debate on felt versus rubber wading boots. You know, my experience, the, the felt soles are probably your best slip resistant sole. So it's gonna be pretty tough to beat that felt when you're talking about getting on slippery rocks. You can add metal studs into the felt too. Your, uh, your stability and your, your grip is gonna improve quite a bit. But generally felt for most people is gonna be a really good choice. Wading staff is, is, is absolutely, it's not a cane. It is there for you to test the surface, test the depth, get a third point of contact. Um, again, it goes back to what's a fall worth to you, right? You know, if that thing prevents one good fall, it seems like it, it's earned its keep. So personal defense, I don't know if you can see it, this comes through in the picture, but this guy's turned his rifle into a fishing rod. So he's, he's good, no one's screwing with him, right? There's a couple different levels of personal defense. You need to find something that you're comfortable and competent with and that works for you. So different alerting systems, whistles, air horn, um, a chemical deterrent, so like a, like a mace or something like that um, can be very effective as well even more important than what you carry is, is kind of how you avoid getting into those situations in the first place. So fishing with a partner, um, you know, making sure that if, if, if you really shouldn't be out by yourself, um, not being out by yourself, uh, know your surroundings and going back to the same thing, just avoiding tunnel vision, just kind of keeping some situational awareness and, you know, knowing what's going on around you. So what to do when something goes wrong? There's really no way to plan for every bad thing that could happen. The difference between a, catastrophe and a close call, a lot of times boils down to what your first reaction is gonna to be to that. And it's not necessarily people panicking even have bad intentions or trying to, to, to freak out and get, and get themselves out of the situation. A lot of times what you do trying to help can be just as much of a problem. The first thing that you should do if you're able to do it is to start alerting 911. Start trying to elevate that, that response protocol. It might take a little, a little while, uh, but getting that, that first alert out there is, is critical to, to you know, uh, mitigating the, the damage of the situation. Keep yourself safe and don't make things worse. So if you're dealing with someone else's emergency, the worst thing that you can do is to put yourself in danger even if you think that you might be helping them. And you have to keep yourself safe as the first priority. When you're in a situation when things have gone bad, determine the most severe threat. Let's say we've got a broken arm, some bleeding coming from the head and, and, and bad breathing. So they're not, they're not breathing really, really well. It's really easy to focus on that broken arm or that, that, that bleeding that's coming from the head. Heads bleed a lot, faces bleed a lot, but you're not usually gonna bleed to death from bleeding from the face. You're not gonna die from broken arm, but you can die from not being able to breathe well. So let's say they've got, you know, something that's happening with their throat. That's got to be your focus. So don't, so don't let yourself get tunnel vision on maybe what looks the worst or like what the most distracting injury is. Figure out what the, the most critical threat to, to life and safety is going to be. Uh, and then focus what you can, can do on that. And then focus your effort on what you can control. So if you're in a situation where you have a lot going wrong, you can't solve it all, right? So focus your energy on something that is an immediate threat. It's worth your time and it's something that you can control. 
but don't try and fix everything all at once. If you've got someone with, with a broken arm and bleeding from the head and trouble breathing, focus on the one thing that you can do. If all you can do is just kind of keep them breathing, then that's fine. That's great. You know, that, that the rest of that can be dealt with later. Um, cool head and positive outlook. Uh, if you're not going to be able to respond effectively, if you don't think things are going to work out well, and you don't keep high morale during a situation. You know, people who say they can and people who say they can't are, are both often, or most often right. And then if you can go, you better know where to go. So a lot of times getting yourself out of the situation is what you need to do. So if you're able to do it, you need to do it, but you have to know where to go. Final thoughts, um, personal safety is your responsibility. Um, you're gonna go out into the woods and, and engage in these activities. It's your responsibility to keep yourself safe and, and know what to do when the situation comes. You don't rely on your technology. We get married to it and you know it fails us uh, and it tends to fail us when we really need it. Emergency services might not be close by, just kind of talked about that. And then you know go above and beyond, be an asset in someone else's emergency. You know take that first aid course, be prepared, just be that person that says like I'm here to help you. Like I'm not a doctor but like let's get you to one. And then finally uh, the relationship with the outdoors is worth it. I think there's a lot of a lot of old men out there that are probably only only still alive right now because they decided to stay in just good enough shape to keep fishing. They're like if I can get one more season in, <laughs> that's what I want. And but just doing that, you know, just getting that little bit of extra exercise, that little bit of extra flexibility, mobility, eating just a little bit better, just so you can keep just just healthy enough to keep fishing. I you know that's not a bad goal for myself. If I can just stay just healthy enough to get fishing, you know, you actually live a lot longer. Thank you, absolutely. Thank you very much.